Computers store information as a series of ones and zeros. All information is reduced to a series of ones and zeros, as letters, numbers, colors, sounds, etc. cannot be stored in the normal form. The term we use for referring to information as a series of ones and zeros is digital information. As our eyes have three different color receptors, red, green and blue, all colors can be recreated by combining those three colors together. A picture can also be reduced to a series of dots. Those dots are called pixels and all digital systems store pictures with a given number of pixels. The larger the number of pixels that can be stored, the greater the quality of the picture that can be reproduced. An example of this is the ratings for digital cameras. A digital camera which is rated at 16 MP can store pictures with up to 16 million pixels. As pictures are in squares, to double the resolution you need to square the number of pixels. So a 16 megapixel camera has twice the resolution of a 4 megapixel camera and is half the resolution of a 256 megapixel camera. So the real difference between a 16 megapixel camera and a 10 megapixel camera would be negligible. Returning to the discussion on colors, all pixels are stored with 255 different values for each of the three colors, red, green and blue, for each pixel in the picture. The number 255 is significant as it is the largest number that can be stored with the eight ones and zeros in a digital information system. To aid the translation between our way of working and the digital ones and zeros, a number system called hexadecimal was invented in the early days of computing. The hexadecimal number system uses the numbers 0 to 9 and letters A to F to give 16 unique values for every digit. In the decimal system, we are all familiar with there are 10 unique symbols, each representing a value from 0 to 9. When a number greater than 9 is encountered, we put a number in the next column to indicate the number of 10s. So the number 42 is multiplied by 10 plus 2 multiplied by 1. In the hexadecimal system, the rightmost number represents the units or ones, the same as in the decimal system. But the number in the next column represents the number of 16s. So 42 in hexadecimal is 4 multiplied by 16 plus 2 multiplied by 1. The decimal um, equivalent would be 64 plus 2 or 66. Returning back to the colour numbering, the red, green and blue is then 6 hexadecimal digits with each pair representing the colours in the red, green and blue order. So the colour C72F3A is predominantly red with some green and blue as C7 is many times larger than 2F and 3A. Now contrary to what you probably know about colour, white is all the colours mixed together equally and therefore has a colour FFFFF. Black is the absence of all colours and is therefore 0000000. 000 000 000 000. When the colour is converted to printing, the opposite colours are mixed together. 
The colours are CYM, which stands for cyan, yellow and magenta. This is commonly referred to as CYMK, with the K standing for black. In this scheme, white is the absence of all colour, and black is the addition of all colours. To generate the numbers for the colours, a very handy tool has been developed at the following website, http um, colour scheme designer com Open the website and you will see this color wheel. If you click anywhere on the wheel, the number to the bottom and right is the number of that color. In the right hand side are the matching colors and hovering over those colors will give you the number for each of those colors. Above the wheel are six different wheels to create different multicolor schemes. For example, clicking on the triad will give you three contrasting colors. You can rotate the black dot around to select colors and the contrasting colors are shown by the two white dots. The angle between the white dots can also be varied to change the level of contrast between the colours. On the right hand side are boxes with colours of different shades for the contrast. Hovering over these boxes gives you the colour numbers. The tabs down the bottom of the page gives different options and shows two web designs using the lighter and darker versions of the major colours. This is the end of the lesson on colours. Now use the complement option on the web page to select colours and use the colour numbers in the web page we created last lesson.